Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. The celebratory headlines beamed, new vaccine to prevent cervical cancer cleared by the FDA. But not all parties were celebrating. In a Focus on the Family news release, a member of the conservative group, the Physicians Consortium, said, quotes, we're going to be sending a message to a lot of kids that you just take this shot and you can be as sexually promiscuous as you want, and it's not going to be a problem, and that's just not true, close quotes. This statement echoed earlier comments made by a representative from the Family Research Council, quotes, giving the HPV vaccine to young women could be potentially harmful because they may see it as a license to engage in premarital sex, close quotes. Sensing that a stance against cancer prevention may be untenable, the Christian Coalition of America took a more conciliatory tone with these words, quotes, even though we believe that abstinence is the best way to prevent any sexual disease before marriage and in the younger years of a girl's life, we do support a vaccination that would prevent this horrible disease from taking the lives of our young girls, mothers, and grandmothers in their later years, close quotes. As is so often the case, lack of knowledge breeds confusion. What are the facts about human papillomavirus, its sexual transmission, and cancer? Well, let's begin with HPV. There are more than 100 varieties of HPV. Most of them are harmless. 35 of the 100 are transmitted sexually. Some of these, notably HPV 16, 18, 31, and 45, are considered high risk and can lead to cervical cancer. That is, the cancerous change in a thin, flat, squamous cell layer that covers the neck of the uterus. Others, such as HPV 6, 11, 42, 43, and 44, are considered low risk for cancer, but often lead to the development of genital warts. The new HPV vaccine signals your immune system to produce defense cells to fight HPV if you're exposed to it. Primarily, it focuses your defenses against HPV 16 and 18, which cause 70% of cervical cancer, and HPV 6 and 11, responsible for 90% of genital warts. The vaccine-induced immune defenders stand in the ready until needed. And unless trends change, it's highly likely that if you're sexually active, you'll sometime need it in your life. Why? Because it's estimated that up to 75% of adults, age 15 to 49, have been infected by genital HPV. Vaccination of the U.S. population could in the future prevent 7 of 10 cases of cervical cancer and 9 of 10 cases of genital warts. How does HPV cause cancer? To answer this, let's take a step back some 50 years to the creation of the pap smear by Dr. George Papanicolaou. His test, familiar to all today, involves collecting cells from the cervix during a routine pelvic exam and sending them for microscopic examination. Most women begin pap tests within three years of their first sexual intercourse or after the age of 21. The results can fall into several categories. The surface cells, called squamous cells, or mucus-producing glandular cells that originate from inside the uterus or the cervical canal, are often normal. In fact, of the 50 million pap smears in the U.S. each year, about 45 million are normal. In about 2 million cases, though, the cells are labeled atypical, which is to say they're slightly abnormal. This may be the result of a general infection, irritation, trauma, or from the human papillomavirus. Of the remaining 3 million, approximately half are precancerous, destined to slowly become cancers, and the other half are already cancerous, requiring further follow-up, which is curative in 90% of the cases with early diagnosis. HPV especially HPV 16 and 18, 
have a predilection for cervical squamous cells. They like them and generally stay with and in them for up to a year or two. In fact, this is extraordinarily common in women 18 to 30. But in most women, normal immune defenses eliminate the virus and it disappears or goes dormant. In a small percentage, however, the virus persists in these squamous cells and slowly, gradually, causes the cells to grow out of control and become cancerous. With newer approaches to pap testing, it's now possible to actually test for HPV and its specific types. This may be done in women under 30 who have atypical squamous cells on a pap smear. If the HPV 16 or 18 show up, closer follow-up and additional tests are warranted. It's also more routinely performed in women over 30 because by then, their bodies should have eliminated this virus. If it's still around in its high-risk form, careful follow-up for early cancer detection is warranted. How much cervical cancer does high-risk HPV cause? In 2006, some 10,000 U.S. women will be affected, and nearly 4,000 will die of cervical cancer. Worldwide, there'll be a half a million new cases, and 200,000 will die of cervical cancer. Now let's get back to the vaccine. It should be available in the late summer of 2006. Three shots over six months are required to boost one's immune system. The total cost will be about $360, and it's expected that insurers will cover the expense. The FDA has declared the vaccine safe and effective. The CDC will soon advise who should receive it. It's expected that they'll recommend all girls receive the shots at age 11 and 12, well before most are sexually active and potentially exposed to HPV. There's also a possibility that boys, who can carry the virus as well, could be included, though the FDA has asked for more testing in boys to ensure its safety. Finally, each state must now weigh in to decide whether the tests will be required to enter public schools. These requirements are what assure sufficient population numbers to allow vaccines to gain an upper hand on high incidence transmissible diseases. So here are the facts. One, HPV is predictably present in the majority of sexually active adults. Two, Presence of HPV does not indicate promiscuity. Three, HPV is asymptomatic and short-lived in most adults. Four, in a small percentage, HPV can persist. And if a high-risk variety, this can lead to cervical cancer. Five, cervical cancer kills 4,000 U.S. women and 200,000 women worldwide a year. Six, the HPV vaccine, given at age 11, would eliminate 70% of cervical cancer and save many lives. Rapid adoption of HPV vaccine is clearly the right thing to do. For Health Politics, I'm Mike McGee. Thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee. If you are accessing Health Politics with a portable device, please visit our homepage, healthpolitics.com, for more information on this topic and many others. If you are watching Health Politics on the Internet, please visit the links below for additional information. Download the transcript and slides to share with friends or colleagues, or use the discussion guide to help generate conversations in the classroom. If you are not yet a Health Politics subscriber and would like to begin receiving a weekly email to keep you up to date on our latest programs, please click on subscribe to Health Politics above and enter your email address. Again, thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee.